call the meeting to order at 7.09 p.m. We have a pretty packed agenda. Um, we're going to try to get us out of here at 9, so we may move the discussion of governance and board plan work to the 16th, which I kind of hate to do, but I said oh, we've got a full agenda that we started at 6. So, um, public comment, and also um, I would encourage uh, people with agenda items. Um, I believe there's uh, the parents of the parent requester here. You can use this time to, to speak to the board. Uh, and also anyone interested in being on this steering committee. I know we had one expression of interest. Uh, so um, why don't we do that now so you guys don't have to stick around to the bitter end, uh, particularly on the search committee. Jim, do you, do you want the parent request now or do you want it under parent request? Uh, I can leave it up to the, the parents. Um, we should get to it relatively soon. It's on the agenda for 715. Um, but if you want to use this time, either is fine. Let's do the committee that? person first. Okay, let's, let's do, yeah, Brett. Um, Brett Williams, I was just, I wanted to reiterate that I'm really excited about this submit an, an intention to be part of the committee. I don't really know. Um, I know I can make all the meetings. I can make the long day. I'm actually off that day with the long interviews. Mm -hmm. So everything would sort of fit. I also I have twin two and a half year old daughters and a 13 year old that's at the middle school. So I'm very interested in the future of the system. I think that this is a crucial time. I have a sense. I have no direct knowledge, but I have a sense that the folding of Roxbury into the Montpelier school system is essentially, um, if I had been hired as the superintendent seven years ago, and I was moving along and things were going great, and somebody said, we're going to fold Roxbury into the school system, I would find that a, a massive change in my, in the already ambitious, you know, agenda that I had, and set of goals that I had put out. So whoever we find I hope will be um, as, as up, if they can make par to where we've been, that will be fantastic. Um, and yeah, and I also was a teacher for four years of elementary school and I have a master of education degree. And so I have quite a bit of experience that I'm, I'm no, no longer drawing upon <coughs> and I'd like to, get those wheels turning again for myself, I guess, so. I don't know if anyone else in Roxbury has wanted to be involved. I have no idea how many people have asked to be involved, but I would commit to being there and doing my best. Great. Thank you. So is this, uh, just so I can clarify, is this time you would expect those with the parent request to speak to you, or is that better fitting along with the agenda item itself? It's totally up to you. If you guys have, uh, we're, we're planning to get to it relatively early. Um, if you have a time crunch and, you know, no, we're, want we're us good. Back. I just okay. wanted to make sure I was doing the right thing at the right yep. time. <laughs> it's, it's up to you. If, if you, if you, you know, need to be, right. get back to kids or whatever, um, you know, you can do it now. Uh, otherwise, uh, it, it's not too far along the agenda. As long as I have the opportunity to, yeah. to address you guys at the, yep. the point the agenda. I'm also here to address a parent request, and I'd be happy to follow or at, at that same time, whatever you prefer. Do we have that parent request on the agenda? You've already, yes. you've already addressed yeah. it. So oh. if, that's, so if that's about a previous one, this yes. would probably be a good time to have that. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so my name is Andre Salini, okay. and I'm the parent of three Roxbury resident children uh, and uh, unfortunately our family was away out of the country when the board took up our request and made a decision to deny Ruby the opportunity to go to be tuitioned out of the district and go to a different school and I'm here to express my frustration and disappointment about that. Um, I think it's a really bad decision and um, for me, fortunately, I have every confidence that by the fall, Ruby will be attending Sharon Academy. 
um, and I'll make it happen however I have to do it. But um, I really think that I would like, the, the, the message I would like to ask you all to consider is if you had three children and you were just simply living your lives out in your town and going to work and doing your thing, and uh, changes came from wherever they came from, um, to disrupt your lifestyle. And uh, that boiled down to you having to tell one of your three children that you can't go to school at the same school that your siblings go to. And I would like to hear from you. You know, how would you, how would you address that with your children? And when we gave Ruby the news, Ruby is 12 years old, and when we let her know that you know, we, we have every confidence that we're going to get in the Sharon Academy in the fall, but the first decision back from the, the board is that they're denying our request. Uh, she started crying. And that's, you know, Ruby, we're going to take like five more minutes, okay? Ruby, uh, our, our oldest daughter, Marguerite, has been going to Sharon Academy for about four years now. So Ruby and subsequently Cedar have spent all of those years going back and forth with our family to Sharon Academy, participating in the activities that happen at the Sharon Academy, getting to know the families that go to Sharon Academy who come from not just Sharon, but all of them, because it's a, a school where people tuition in from everywhere. So we've really established a community with these folks. And um, yeah, I'm going to leave out the part about what a hassle the decision would be if we were to actually send Ruby to Montpelier and let other girls the other way. But just on the face of it, I, 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 I don't. I, I would like to understand what your process was for making the decision. I, I was there at some of the meetings where the cutoff date was made. The decision was made. I mean, some of you were there. Um, I didn't get the sense that there was a long and detailed conversation about how that would impact you. And I think that now, with uh, subsequent parent requests for different uh, things to accommodate the situation that Act 46 has created here, which we voted for which I voted for, which I, like a small handful of people from Roxbury followed this and, and really worked to try to make it happen. Uh, uh, I, I just don't agree that there should be no exceptions. I, I don't agree with it. And I think there's a compelling story here that this, this is how it plays out unfairly. If I were wealthy, I could, and don't assume I'm wealthy because I just went to Europe for three weeks. I'll be paying for that for a long time. But if I were wealthy, I could rent an apartment in Sharon and move our whole family down there and put my house in Roxbury on the market. You know, it, it's, it's, it affects people in different socioeconomic places differently how Act 46 is playing out. And I, I'll leave you with that. I, I really don't think it's fair. I'm going to do everything I can to make my taxpayer money follow Ruby to the Sharon Academy. And I, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm, I'm going to try to make it happen. And, and I wish that I felt like the, the board was I haven't received any information other than just the decision through Brian, through email, but no dialogue, no questions to our family, nothing. So it's not making me feel cared about. Um, you know, I, I was there. I, I knew that the cutoff, what we was going to make the cutoff from a long time ago. And I, I you know, we've been wondering how we're gonna address that. And when we started to address it, it just feels very, like, that's it. That's all I really have to say here. Well, thank you for comments. And 
you know, when we went through the Act 46 merger process, we really thought hard about this, and, and we knew that, unfortunately, some of these decisions were going to leave families in a tough place. Um, uh, but we also knew there there were trade-offs and you know benefits to the community, and you know we tried to be you know transparent about the fact that there you know there would be impacts, and, and we realized that, and, and, and we we feel for you, and, and we feel for your situation. Uh, I'll let other board members speak too, but the reason I think the board came to the conclusion is while your situation is very compelling, uh, and where well the board has a lot of sympathy for it. Our decision was based on the fact that it's compelling, but perhaps not unique. And that once we start letting exceptions to the rule go, there's gonna be a lot of other families who also have very compelling stories. Um, and we felt that we had to stick with the agreement that the, the merger committee came up with, uh, basically for fairness, knowing that unfortunately it was gonna be, you know, not easy for some families and create some situations that aren't ideal. Anyone else? Wow, okay. <laughs> One voice speaks for all. Well, I, I would just add that um, we discussed it in open session, and you can watch, I don't know if you have, you can watch okay. where we discussed it. Okay. I think okay. some of us may not be speaking less because we don't want to say anything, because we feel like it's inappropriate in this context to revisit what was already discussed and oh, decided. Okay. That, Thank and you that is speaking for, for me. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Um, so action items. Uh, so we don't have a consent agenda, right? So, so okay. Okay. Uh, first item 3A is approval of the minutes from April 11th and end April 19th. Um, do you have a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make a motion to approve both the minutes from April 11th and April 19th. I second. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> uh, approval of the busing bid. I move that we approve the busing bid. Second. Second. Any discussion? Let me just ask quick grant. So it's a three year contract, is that right? For two. Three year contract for two option two years options. beyond that. Okay. So we'll have flexibility in terms of the structure of the contract, number of buses, number of vans, routes, et cetera, every year? Yes, I mean, the price impacts will have to be negotiated if we make changes, but yes, we can make changes. Okay, so there's some flexibility then since right. potentially it's gonna be changing after the first year of operation. Potentially, I mean, the, the plan right now is kind of status quo for, for Montpelier schools, for Roxbury, the plan right now that we have written up is a K-4 bus route and a 512 bus route. And those will be you know, stopping at various places within the community. So we'll see how that plays out in year one. And the low bid is our current um, vendor, so there's a relationship there, so hopefully things will work out well. I do know somewhere along the line there was a discussion about whether it would be a one bus kind of thing, and did it just not work? It, it becomes very difficult with school start times. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. So if we did it, we would have to change start times in Montpelier just for allowing time to get there. Um, and the afternoon would be difficult too because uh, you would have to have two separate buses in the afternoon because by the time kids would get here from Montpelier, this school would have been long since let out. Cops. And so we kind of shifted to kind of a, a typical routine daily transportation uh, approach. Thank you. Further discussion? In favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, 
approval of the assignment and assumption agreement. Hey, Jeff. How come we don't do a consent agenda anymore? Because the board has to take action to make a consent agenda. Make it as part of their work. What, where is it in the current Montpelier policy? I could try to copy it. Oh, that's a good question. I inherited it, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I do know that that board, I'd have to look back at that board. I think just, I it's think not, you could just. It's not just, it's not just in Robert's rules, like something that because, because we, I think we all, we think we agreed to follow Robert's rules when the board we was did, constituted, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Does anyone yeah, know if it's in there? The consent agenda, I'm not. I'm not sure that it is. I wouldn't be able to speak to it accurately right now. So. Yeah. yeah, we have to institute a policy, right? I, I don't know, and it has to be a policy. I think the board could just. Say, why not step, have a uh, consent agenda? At the next agenda. meeting, we could have a consent well, agenda. Let's, let's do that. seems to work. Does anyone want to make a motion that we institute a consent agenda? I move that we institute a consent agenda. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Yay. So, since we don't have one for this meeting, we will have to go through these. You can do it quickly, though. Um, Approval of assignment and assumption agreement. A lot of good alliteration in that one. So if we had a consent agenda, we would not <laughs> have that alliteration opportunity. Uh. I move that we approve the assignment and assumption agreement. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, approval of new teacher contract. I move we approve the new teacher contract. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Uh, approval of facilities director contract. We're very excited about our new facilities we director. We are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I move that we approve our new facilities director contract. Second. Discussion. Can I ask Ryan? Mm -hmm. Did references get checked? Mm -hmm. Oh yes. They did. Oh yes. Okay. Absolutely. Those, yeah, the CDs are just provided upon request, so I wasn't sure. Was Absolutely, and um, there was a reason at the time, and they were provided subsequently, and I made an appropriate number of calls. Okay. In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so now I actually appoint board <laughs> members to negotiating committee for contract negotiations. Um, do we have a nomination, a movement for a nomination? If not to nominate Tina. And, 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 and Peter. And Peter. Nicely done. Nicely done. I will second I'll that. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that would be good. All those in favor? Fine. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you for your service. Yes. <laughs> yes. And for the record, Peter agreed to this previous. Oh, good. <laughs> OK. Uh, so now we have adoption of policies that have been warned and uh, warned and read the appropriate number of times, which I'm forgetting exactly what it is. Yep. Uh, our alcohol and drug-free workplace, drug and alcohol testing of transportation employees, Prevention of employee harassment, uh, budget execution, fiscal management, substitute teachers and volunteers, and work study students. So since this isn't a consent agenda, I'm not sure how to proceed. Can I say something about one of those policies, or shall I pull it? You could vote on the rest. And I think you can settle it. It's just a make the motion, get it on the get it on the table, so, so we, we can, can discuss, discuss it and just yeah. discuss it. Okay. Yep. I move Thank that you. we approve all these policies. I'll second. Discussion, Tina. Um, in the prevention of employee harassment, you have the name down of someone who is not going to be employed in the district next time. Can we just, since we're approving the policy, um, can we, what do we do with that? Do we put the, the name? Should position instead yeah, of the, the name. Yeah, the position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's principal Yelman. You so I'm just principal of the elementary school. Right. Identify okay. the position. Just so you don't have to do this again is what I was thinking. Oh. Yeah, does that have to be part of the policy that we approve? I mean it seems like the 
Well, it's in the it's policy in the, you're asking exactly. us. Right, I know it is, but I wonder. Right, but it would change. Over. It would change. I, I thought the policy previously just said that there has to be an employee identified in each facility who has that Which role. is how that's supposed to be. Yeah. But it doesn't have to actually do the naming. It just right. has to say right. that there shall be named. Right. Each year, each, each year, each facility has to figure out who's going to do that. Well, for the purposes of this, since we're almost there, we could just put in principal of the elementary school in that space for now. Yep. And that's up to the policy people. I don't know. I, yeah. What's our requirement for having these things? If we warrant the exact language that we approve has to be warned? The substance of the policy it's has the to be yeah, warned. I mean, so this, you can yeah. make, I think. And it says, or to the principal. Oh, no. It's just on the minutes. Or yeah. Or yeah. yeah. It's just that it has it listed. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it should update itself almost so organically. I, so I think you, you make a motion to amend the motion. So you approve with the following change. I would like to amend the motion to um, change the, to leave off the name of the elementary principal and just have elementary principal in this particular policy. Second. Does it make sense to do that to all the positions? Just so the I was sort of debating is. it only because yeah. since it's here, it's clearly everybody knows, but everybody knows who's in that position. So if you took out the names and just were sure that the position is, yeah. I think. To make it consistent, just to do that. Yeah, well, I'll make it consistent to make it durable, too. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I don't sense. have it right here, but they do, it does have the name of the position in each one. Mm -hmm. right. okay. So do you want to? Okay, so now my amendment to my amendment is <laughs> um, just to it's there, say, it's got it in all of them, so just take out all the names and leave the positions. I was no. just checking to make sure the positions were So in all instances in which individuals are named, substitute their positions. Or just take out the Their just positions the are position there, so we're just taking out the names. Second. This is the state's policy, the um, model policy that they put out, not the SBA. And the SBA adopted the AOE model policy, so the state did it. I would, it, it came with names. Hmm. And so I would only think that we might need to go back to the legal references to be clear that names are not required in the policy and that you can go with just positions. So what would happen, yeah. what's the long yeah, term of this so that every year you change it if it needed to be changed? Well, it's not a substantive change and so to change the name of the principal each year. Can be done clarifically. It, do, it does done say, clarifically. it does say principal colon, address colon, telephone number colon. So I, I would suggest either remove this and hold it for one more time and recheck to make sure that there's not um, in any of the legal references a reason why the names are listed as names. The model policy is clear about names. I wondered so, if it was there just because for harassment you say and say again so you're clear who the person is. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and different than other policies, so I wondered if that was the reason. But, I don't even know if there's any legal reference in that case. And I mean, maybe that we might need to clarify that for you before you do anything. I don't think it's sort of insignificant, but it's a. You're providing information to folks very directly about who to report to. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I know the title is the title, but the name is more identifiable to yeah. the actual person. So I'm going to move we table that one policy. Uh, actually, I don't know if there's an amendment. You can't amendment right now. There's an amendment. I think that it. Michelle could withdraw the entire motion. Wasn't it your motion? And then we could right. move again. Can you do that, that when there's an work? amendment? Well, I, just, I could withdraw my amendment. Yeah, but before I do that, <laughs> if, is there any harm to just leaving the names? If we can yeah, change can it we clerically. Just remove it? Right. Yeah, <laughs> how big a deal is it to change it? Yeah, we'll obviously put Chris's replacement in when 
yep. terms of replacement. Well, actually, what we could do is approve this and then figure out what one does if one has a policy like this yeah. when they have to change a name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you withdrew yours? You're withdrawing your amendments? I will withdraw my There's amendment. No amendment. Okay. So we're back to the original motion. That's Which was to approve all of these policies. policies. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. We have more <coughs> policies. And another round of thanks to Bridget, Policy. Steve, and Ryan for, uh, for their plugging persistence. through these. Uh, item number four, discuss uh, parent requests. I know we have uh, the parents here who want to speak to the requests. So um, that's the time. Thank you. I do have something to hand out. So I can start talking while I'm doing this. I'm used to it from select board meetings. So my wife, Melissa, and I are here tonight uh, requesting. Um, oh, I actually had enough of these. I'm impressed. We are requesting accommodation under uh, 16 BSA. We can try to get it right. 821 section C. I'm going to sit towards the front because I have hearing issues, so I will be honest. So excuse me for cutting in here. Um, based on geographic convenience, which is worded in the state statute, uh, we uh, currently reside in Roxbury. Uh, as I, I've read your whole packet, and I respect 52 pages of a packet. I'm quite impressed. Um, the, uh, our town line is our property line. Uh, we have a Northfield mailing address like many folks in Roxbury, but that is neither here nor there. We are requesting this because our daughter is currently uh, attending preschool in Northfield under Act 166, which allows us to have her attend preschool education of our choice. Um, we are asking for your help to allow her to continue her education at the Northfield schools. Geographic convenience. Uh, we would like to demonstrate based on our location, proximity to the schools, direction of travel, which is in the summarization, but direction of travel based on uh, our work patterns. I work in Northfield. I'm the chief of the animal service in Northfield, have been for four years. I've been a volunteer there for 20. Uh, my work day starts at 6 a.m. and ends hopefully at 4. Uh, many times it doesn't end at 4, hence why I am still in my work clothes, which I try to be out of as soon as I can at the end of the day. My wife's work schedule is 7.30 to 4.30, and all, both of us are heading in the direction of north to individually transport. Our, our daughter here would be extensive time and use, needing to use uh, both pre and uh, post academic day uh, services, uh, assuming those services uh, are available. And uh, if we were to utilize the bus route, she would get on a bus currently, uh, as I know you guys are discussing buses, at 6.58 a.m. according to the current schedule. I'm amazed it's down to the minute, but at White's Heating. Uh, and uh, based on the current pattern, it would then go to the Northfield School where it picks up students off of the Northfield bus that travels uh, East Roxbury and collects those students, then comes back here to Roxbury. Uh, we would not be able to guarantee her pickup until at least 5 p.m. in the evening. That is a very, very long day for any student, let alone somebody who's five years old and getting her first experience at full school days, uh, except for one preschool day a week currently. Both the use of pre and post school assistance um, uh, and shifts in our support system, which I, I've also I tried to highlight there, I'm trying not to be just reading from a script, uh, would present uh, issues in ad expense economically would impact us. Um, if we were to adjust our work days to do certain things to, to provide for her to come down here, it would impact us um, in our work day, our financial impact. It would actually be quite rare. Um, our current support system is amongst my 70 year old mother uh, when she can help. Uh, close friends, the godparents to our children who live in Northfield, 
and our daycare, all of which is Northfield based or on a Northfield bus route. We would not be able to utilize a majority of that support system down here to accommodate shortening that day or cutting the cost expense of making the day down here. So for those fiscal reasons, as well as proximity reasons, we are requesting under what the statute allows, which is a geographic convenience. I did read your packet and I read the, the briefs um, from the lawyer. Um, I struggled a little bit at him indicating that, or the lawyer indicating that uh, geographic wasn't a consideration when it's explicit, it's actually the words in the statute. Um, but I understood a lot of the concerns raised into it and the precedent concerns and the, I hate to say it, a little disheartening sitting here with your earlier discussion, just kind of, and I, and I understand a lot of this. I've been doing public service for a lot of years, 10 years in the government before taking over the ambulance service as my full-time job. Uh, I, I hope to uh, bring upon uh, interested ears in, in understanding our concerns and what we are trying to do. And as I spoke with folks before the meeting, none of what we are doing is in any way a condemnation or anything of educational systems existing in the Montpelier Roxbury district. It is purely based on what we feel has benefited our daughter and purely what we feel will benefit our small family going from here into the future. That is why we're making the request. I have included in the packet a letter from her current instructor, Ms. Amanda Rogers, who's the uh, early education coordinator for the Northfield school system. And uh, because, and not to try to pull heartstrings, because I love when people put faces to names, the third page is our daughter. So I wanted you to be able to put a face to the name Charlotte Rutter. So I do thank you for your time and would love to have a discussion or be able to answer questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion? So, so I'm not terribly familiar with Bull Run, but right now we have students who live in Bull Run in this building. So I understand if different people live in different places, et cetera, et cetera, but we have students in this building right now from Bull Run. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of families, those kids make that same exact trip that you're talking about not being able to make. Okay, I, I'm not going to pre-guess what other families are capable of doing or what their schedules may be. Um, that is not my, my place to assess their capabilities. Right. Within our capabilities, this is what we need to best benefit us. What's our process for this? We discuss and then we vote at this meeting. Mm -hmm. That's what we did at the last one. I think, I think we, we could table a decision if we wanted not, further information, but it's not listed as an action item on the agenda. Right. Yeah, it's listed as discussion. It's listed as discussion. It's listed as discussion. Bridget. So, um, some questions I had were um, around the issues around the tuition waivers, um, because it seems like that's two different. Yeah. It, has that been explored? Would, would Northfield waive the tuition? Is that something? Uh, it just seems like if there's, it's two very different requests if it's tuition or mm -hmm. allow with a tuition waiver. Isn't the first step normally to ask the receiving school to waive tuition? Which would be Northfield. Which would be Northfield. Mm -hmm. Right. That right. is required. I mean, that's about parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you asked Northfield if they would waive tuition? We have not presented a request to waive tuition uh, to the Northfield School to sell us out. So the guidance we have received prior to the appropriate course of action was to come to you folks first because this is where she would otherwise enroll, um, which is coming up sooner than I'd like to imagine. Um, of her getting older. Um, but uh, we felt the process was to come here first and then see what we would actually be requesting of them. We do know, as far as space goes, uh, the current enrollment plan.
plan for kindergarten for the elementary school includes Charlotte as a attendee. So she is being built into the class structure as a space for her. In Roxbury? In Northfield. How, how is it that she goes to preschool in Northfield now? That's mm -hmm. like Oh, you can go anywhere. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, so that's strange that that town yeah in Montpelier yeah. we have a lot of private preschools and so that's the kids go to private preschools or to our preschool and I, it didn't occur to me that, that they could use that to go to other public preschools. So that's odd to me that the Northfield kindergarten program will be building in a student who is not residing there. Like we typically have Northfield students in our preschool program as well, but they're not expected in the headcount for the following year because they would be attending their their resident district. So I'm not really sure why the Northfield Kindergarten Program will be doing that. Does, does, does anyone know what, whether we have to make a decision before they can go to Northfield? Because if, if they I, made an arrangement with Northfield, then Northfield didn't charge them tuition. They could go there. I think what, what I would suggest that this board consider is if they approach the Northfield or Payne Mountain School District, um, and their request is denied, that's in paragraph three, um, this family could come back to this board and um, request that Montpelier, Roxbury, pay that tuition to attend that Northfield school. And so I think that could potentially be something that this board at least discusses. You know, it's correct, it's not listed as an action item, um, but that's something to consider. So you're saying that's a sequence to follow? So they would go, right, a sequence right. to follow. Right. But he's saying we could discuss now. If, whether if we got there, if what this board's there. inclination would be, potentially. I, I think you have the current policy in place to dictate the process, and the state doesn't actually define that process. So it's not that that is the process to follow. It's that that is uh, interpretation of a process to follow that has not been officially defined. That's true, but there are still moving parts in here right. that need to be considered before answering the question in full, in, intuition being one of them, and where it is we plan our students to go in terms of internal funding, too. So we don't have those answers yet. So in, in the absence, I mean, I, we don't I, have that answer. I understand yet. you've gotten different advice, but I would certainly recommend for this board at least to, this is the process that our council has recommended we at least consider. Um, and since there is, as she points out, there's nothing in the Articles of Agreement that specifically addresses it, this is the best attempt to try to navigate a tricky, a tricky subject within the interpretation of the law that this board has used to this point. But process-wise, wouldn't it not be the parent's responsibility to contact Northfield and find out if they could bring their child there without paying tuition? From, from it's not yes. a board. It's not the board's yeah, right. responsibility. Right. So, um, I think that seems to me the process. It seems like it's a hard night for telling people it's not working. We on the merger committee had a lot of discussion and knew that a lot of families would be affected in one way or another because of this merger. But if regardless of the merger, though, even if the Roxbury School District was existing, we would have come to the Roxbury board and say a request, regardless of the merger occurring. I see what you're saying. Yeah. It has nothing to do with right. the Come on, yeah. Except you're now coming to a different board. Yes. 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 It would have been, well, right. maybe some a couple of similar faces, but not all the same faces. Okay. I see. No, that makes sense. And. Yep. If I could ask a question, is it, is it your hope that the Montpelier Roxbury School District would allow this? I, sorry, I, sure, sorry, and I speak softly. Is it your hope that the Montpelier Roxbury School District would approve this for your child's complete education term or only for kindergarten or only for elementary school? It is our hope that, uh, <laughs> uh, that it would, I don't intend to come back here each year to ask for the same thing, but I, it would be for her to continue her education at the Northfield School System. Throughout? Throughout. Yes. K-12 yeah. Twelve Twelve. years, K-12. Yes. Both children. 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 Both
Yes, however, what I would expect, um, if I can add in, because I'm, I'm reading the packet, I would expect that probably by the point that our 14-month-old reaches an age where this would be a discussion, that there might be a process in place like was suggested by the attorney for a one-to-one -one swap system or something like that, which has existed in the Montpelier system for years with U32 and other places. Um, and I would expect that then there would be an appropriate process to apply through at, at that point for him. Well, we, um, we have that with Northfield. Does Isn't this it just for high school? high school? But high school. I was going to say, but it doesn't start until high school. school. Right. High school. High school. Yeah. Correct. But it exists at that level. But there, it was suggested in the packet from yep. the attorney that something like that could be initiated with the neighboring district, and that I would expect, like as he brought up with our son, that uh, obviously a lot can happen in four years, but um, that there would be a more defined process to do versus. Uh, digging in the titles to, to find a process. Yeah. Can we can we do a, a swap on an ad hoc basis? In other words, without a policy, if a swap were proposed um, at the elementary school level, would that be something the board could just take an action on? Or, you know, I, I mean, I don't know what kind of demand that would be. I don't if know somebody whether... from Northfield wanted to come Sure. Here. We've never done it at any other level but the high school. Doesn't yeah. mean we couldn't, but. <laughs> Well, there's, there's, a, there's a concern about, about it at all, right? Yeah. Yeah. But there's, yeah. I think, <laughs> Steve, there's a concern about continuity. There's a concern about Absolutely. a child's educational continuity. So, you know, a swap mm -hmm. works swap for kindergarten, right. but then it doesn't work the next year. Mm -hmm. right. I see. So mm -hmm. if, once, if, if on one yeah. direction yeah. starts to wane, right. you strand people. Right. Potentially. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's tricky. the same boat as Andre was in, where you might have one older sibling was able to get the transfer that they wanted, but the younger sibling wouldn't be able to, so then you're going to get stuck in a, a sticky situation again. Well, then you get the other situation, too, where if you keep approving the exceptions, then you're, the right. district's paying out yeah. a, a lot, lot of money. money. Yeah. 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 A lot of money. We're talking 13 years times 16,000. 16, well, 15,000 adjusted for inflation. Yeah. Our, our K six, our K six is twelve. Our seven, twelve, sixteen. I'm sure other districts are somewhere in that ballpark. <coughs> so we're talking quarter million dollars for one child. For one child, the first child. So it's not a decision that can be made lightly. So this was the opportunity we were given to bring it to you. Absolutely, We've done absolutely. Great. Yeah. Just, yeah, we just get stuck in these. Having to think about the beyond you is the problem. We have to be thinking about the whole system. So, uh, with compassion for every family, too. One thing I would comment on reading the, the lawyer's opinions is that as a new board, because you are a new entity in truth, um, everything you do sets a precedent. Of, and I, I, was not, and if the lawyer is present and wants to yell at me afterwards, it's okay. Um, not in favor of recommendation that tells people to caution on making precedent. Because everything you do, whether you're establishing the policies you just voted in or the ones you're talking about later tonight, or changing buses to include a, a new busing system for a town, you're setting, you're, you're setting and building new. So everything is building new. And that whether it's our decision or other decisions, the board as an entity should not be afraid to step forward and do those things because that's what you are tasked with doing as the first board after the merger. That's the maybe unfortunate role some parts and also the beneficial roles because you can craft changes that you thought for years could be in the system. Yeah, and, and also, I mean, what if, I think precedent is weighing heavily on the board because I think you know, we agreed to a structure and wanna, we want that structure to work. And if some of the first messages that get out is that the structure is very open, <laughs> open and malleable, uh, you know, we're going to get, frankly, a lot of requests. And, and not just are we going to get a lot of requests, we're not going to get to the point where people are bought into the system and the system is working. And, you know, and, and we're going to keep. Uh, but we're going to keep creating these types of situations. And not that it's a concerned child. We will turn around and we will go to the uh, yeah. Pay Mountain Board and we will make the, re the request there. Um, but we, 
I wanted my government job was very built into rules. I finished that career as an OSHA enforcement officer for a number of years. So stat statutes and rules are kind of where my brain lives a lot of times, but we, we'll follow them out. And obviously if either board renders a decision that we don't agree with, we have 30 days to appeal to the Secretary of Education uh, based on the statute. And they will rule solely on the statute, not on um, concerns of precedent. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When I'm in a position like his, theirs, I think time is of the essence. And so what I think we can do is help by not, by moving as quickly as we possibly can and being clear about the timeline ahead so that we're not, that we're not costing days. Um, so I'm wondering if we can give an expectation about what we, what decision we'll make and when we'll make, or what kind of a decision we'll make and when we'll make it. So we can kind of, you know, they, so that they can keep moving and do what they need to do also. Um, if this is only a discussion at this point, or do we, we take an action now saying that, um, that we will follow, that we're taking the recommendation of council and that we will not take an action at this point, or we just don't take an action and that pushes them off. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out how we give a direction, be clear, so that there's, there's, a, there's a path that everybody agrees to. Well, in, I, in, I would move that if Payne Mountain um, waives the tuition, we would accept the request. And that eliminates the step of them having to come back to us. If they accept the tuition, or if they waive the tuition. If they, if they waive, waive the, the tuition. Is that, I don't the understand question is, why that's that, even a decision. Does that right. matter to is us? That, I mean, if they, don't have to Payne, make they don't show up. <laughs> well, I, if, if you know, if, if Payne accepts their request, can they just go and no wave us goodbye whether we Absolutely, want them to leave we don't or not. have to approve that. Yeah. Right, right. They can just go. They just go. And I, mean, I, I guess like private 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 school, school, right? Waiver. Right. But we might be able to give them the answer to the question of well, what is this agreed? What what does this board think? So that way they don't go to Payne and mm -hmm. Payne say, Well, why don't you go back to Montpelier Roxbury board and have them pay right. and, and get a decision from them. So my sense is that we should, we should deny paying tuition. And the reason is because as you said, everything we do is a precedent, but that means everything we do has the effect of policy at this point. And we have, I think that, that we would need to make this policy decision kind of dispassionately outside of the needs of a single family. And that's not to say that your needs aren't important. I have a couple of young kids in elementary school too. And, um, but uh, I think that because these decisions now have the effect of enforceable policy in the future, I think we have to be very careful about anything other than an explicit policy statement of some sort. Um, so if we, make, we don't make exceptions, we make decisions. And you know, how do we want to treat this today? How do we want to treat it in the future? And I think that would have to be the context we'd have to make this decision in. Um, and that usually requires some rational rationed time involved to make that, that to have that conversation. So you're making a motion or? I don't know, is that a motion? Is that how we do it? Yeah, I think you would yeah. need to make a motion. Okay, so I would move that. See, in the same breath as I say we need more conversation is I, uh, Closing the door on this at this point is less essential to me than not leading them for false hope. So it's kind of like, I almost feel like I'm more comfortable with a kind of a, a test in the weather and that we say, you know, I just, I personally could see in a, in, at our next meeting, possibly or probably denying, but at this meeting, I'm not prepared to, to say no. And, and I, my question is, I'm going back to your original sure. statement to be fair to the family. Why wouldn't you make a decision now if yeah. we agree on the decision? Um, the family can go and ask for a waiver of tuition and they could bring their child to Northfield if Northfield waives the tuition. But the question is, yeah. why would All we right. ask them to come back if, in effect, we would vote mm -hmm. to deny this? Right. So I'm not gonna make the motion. Okay. So what are motion the floors so I will make a motion to deny the request put forward by the Rudder family I'll second that motion further discussion I'm gonna abstain 
because I'm going to disclose that LT and I were colleagues for 10 years. And I'm just going to stay out. I, I'd suggest that maybe the first part of this is that that we suggest they go back, or we, we require that they go back first and seek the waiver, um, and uh, try to achieve it that way. You know, that's not to say that they can still do that even if we've denied. Oh yeah, that would be there. That would be the thing if we deny. And then there's also the um, process if we do deny of, of appealing to the secretary. secretary. Of well, that's the other thing is, do we hold that up? Because my my question yeah. is, I, I mean, I I feel for the situation, but I also have a sense that the decision is probably pretty clear, and from a process standpoint, I think I think action here might actually make it oh, it's faster, make it easier for them to. Tell their story to pain, and then uh, they can more quickly go to the AOE too, because they'll have to come back for you know another meeting, and depending on what pain means, that could that could be weeks. So I guess is there anybody who thinks we should not deny it then? Can I ask a question of Ryan um, and Lisa? You had said a few meetings back that you think there's a lot of conversation in the community about exceptions. Um, I just feel like if, if the only exceptions we ever get asked for are holders and rudders, there's another one coming on the system. There's another one coming for sure. Yeah. And our anticipation, I'm expecting the seventh or the eighth, the seventh graders who went to Northfield Middle School right now, mm -hmm. I'm expecting that we're getting a letters from them. I could be wrong there, but my guess is we'll probably get letters from those students asking to stay where they were. Um, I, and, and I have to say, in fairness, we've just told another family no. I can't think of why. Mm -hmm. They they had a compelling well, argument. Yeah, they had a very compelling thing. He did not have a statutory way to appeal of students <laughs> position. Uh, you guys said the only thing he was being able to argue against was the de definition of when people could go where. Um, but there wasn't a statutory argument to say that there could be a exception. Um, well, it, I think it'll be interesting if if you do decide to go to the Department of Ed because they'll be in the same position we are. There will be lots of people in lots of merged districts in the same place you are, and they'll have to make a decision. Which I unfortunately think around the state you're going to see a bit of that. But I would caution against. I, I I'm sorry, Ryan, but I don't feel that. The mass exodus of, of Rock, Roxbury people is going to be there with the voting results that you guys had with the merger in town. This if you if, if you had had more waiver, not I'm just saying you you brought up that concern. If you had had more wavering and challenge and appeal and had to fight to get the merger accepted, then I would see that thing. No. But I don't see that because I don't see that others have adopted as many problems as others may have found. Right. I would also, uh, I, I'm getting the gist of what the, the group's consensus is going to be, whether there's a vote tonight or whether there's a vote at another meeting. I would also caution a, a governing body on becoming known as the group that doesn't make any exceptions or doesn't listen. You know, you're listening and I appreciate it, but doesn't feel like the, doesn't portray to the people making requests that any request will actually be considered if it is just a denial, a denial, a denial, a denial. Because then that is your precedent. That, it, that, it, that nothing is ever going to go through the board until the board is different. And that's, an, that's a bad precedent to establish as much as an exception to the rule can be. Richard. Um, I want to, first of all, thank you for the request, which is very well thought out, and for your presentation tonight, which is allowed for a very thoughtful speak discussion up. of the issues. Sorry, I'll try to speak up. Um, and to to try to give you some of my thinking, because I think you're entitled to our thinking as we go through this. Um, I am less sort of coming from where Steve was about making, you know, being concerned about making policy or, or exceptions. I'm 
looking at the request and these requests that would require our district to pay tuition for one student to another district I find extraordinarily difficult to say yes to because it takes resources out of the entire district and it raises these very difficult questions of fairness because it's just a very large commitment of public funds to follow one student that we can't possibly do for very many students at all and it's very hard to figure out where that line is um, so I look at the statute about geographic convenience and the distances um, I'm sure that there are places in Vermont where people could be so far from the other elementary school that they'd have a really that that's what this was intended for I don't see this distance level as being what the statute was getting at um, and if it goes to the secretary and the secretary says otherwise we'll have guidance that we can then apply in the future that would help us from the state to know okay well this is where the in this new world of merged districts and fewer elementary schools this is where the state is kind of drawing some lines but I I just can't look at that distance and say I think that's where um, we're supposed to take um, tuition dollars and pay them out of our district you know, I very much feel for, I very much feel for your situation also not be used for teaching her at the facility she would no longer be Excuse me. As a as a person who grew up and, right. and left public school because I got very tired of I went to I, I grew up in a farming community. I went to a small school that was K through eight, and then we all headed off to the union school. And you want to talk about twelve not necessarily fit in group of kids heading to a union school that was not all farming kids. Um, the guidance office there didn't even pay attention to me going in each day and checking out private school manuals about different <laughs> private school options in the state and outside the state. It didn't even raise a red flag to them. And that was disappointing to me. Um, but there, I'm trying to say, there are, there's a, a lot. And the, the statute, I will admit that the statute is very big. The word convenience doesn't define distance it doesn't define what the hardship of the convenience factor is. Um, it could have, yes, been written for somebody in the Northeast Kingdom that is in a district, but to get there, it takes 20 miles to get there. Or it could be written for somebody like us who would financially and educationally benefit from the mode of traffic and the ability uh, of where our commute is. If we were living, that argument wouldn't hold water if I was living five miles down the road towards Braintree because I'd be coming by this school. My wife would be coming by this school. Um, I feel it does hold water, but I respect your opinion that you, you, you don't. And I, that's part of the interpretation of statutes and guidance documents. Steve. Would it be any more um, convenient for you if your daughter was able to go to Union in Montpelier? Union Elementary in Montpelier. We, we had to consider that because obviously my work is Montpelier. Um, the concern we had is, is that my day sometimes ends at 4.30, but it doesn't always. So we have to still rely on the same support system, which is within Northfield, as well as her after school care, um, which is in Northfield. We, we have considered that because of me being down there. But the timeline for the work day just doesn't line up with the school day. We do have a really really good after school program in Union called Community Connections, which my own daughters have been in for years where they're able to stay there until we get off work at five um, or any time before that, 5.15, 5.30 if you really push it. And uh, the, um, it, um, it's a solid program that doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Any, you know, it's, a, it's, and it's income sensitized and it's, um, uh, it works for a lot of us who don't get off until five. So, you know, I just I ask you to at least consider it because we do actually have a policy no, on, on we're discussing it tonight. It's on yeah, right. So, but we, we we actually in the middle of deliberating. Thankfully, because that's something that again going back to my concern, I I want to be able to think why we're doing something, have a good conversation about, it, not treat things as exceptions. So, I would ask you to at least consider it in this conversation. Um, and unions, um, also an excellent elementary school. So yeah, and, and I, I really want to stress, you know, the. You know, a lot of what's going on is the final financial implications, and you know, again, the snowball effect. Because you mentioned you have, you know, even a younger child. That you know, my guess is when that younger you're going to want that younger child going to the same school and 
having two kids going in two different directions is going to probably create even harder convenient circumstances. So then we get that was the last families. Hey, yes, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. her attending down here and him going to the uh, our daycare will be in two completely opposite directions. Um, so that we're going to still have that <laughs> in the situation where she attends Roxbury. I think we might approve that the school transfer, the elementary school transfer tonight because it's really approved. So we should probably take an action. Take an it's action. It's on the table anyway. Okay. Um, it is on the table. Can we repeat the action? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've lost it. Right. 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 I second it. And I second it. Yeah. 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 To deny, Michelle said she's going to abstain. We haven't got a vote yet. Um, or do we? Take a vote? Yep. Yeah. All those in favor? Uh, Denied. 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 Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We figured out from Ryan that we can deny a request. Uh, any opposed? Abstentions? Well, regardless, thank you guys for your time yeah. tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for you coming. Well in the rest yeah. of the policy development and uh, I believe Monday night or so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Mountain. So we will head there. And then obviously the 30 day clock is going because of actually rendering a decision here. So yeah. um, thank you guys for your time tonight. Yeah. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, for, we have item five, the first policy readings of uh, five new policies. I actually was not around for any of the previous policy reasons. Is there anything special we're supposed to do other than No, I, I think the in the interest of time, since it's approaching 8.15, yeah. um, I would ask the board if there are any specific questions about any of these. Lori and I, um, again, looked at the model policies from the VSBA, reviewed them against um, what each district currently had, made adjustments as appropriate, um, presented them to the folks on the policy committee. I think we're finally getting into a good rhythm. Bridget yeah. is not having to remind me as much um, to send them on. And so um, these, are, these are already well done, in our opinion. They're what both districts are currently following. Um, and so um, I, I would obviously entertain any questions that anyone had. But um, but I do believe this um, this is currently how our both our systems are operating with these policies as they are. I did have yes. I did have a question under the firearms yes. policy. Yes. Sure. Of course, this red raises a red flag with all of us right now. Um, one, two, three, four. Under the fourth paragraph, mm -hmm. we've got the exceptions mm -hmm. that would be made. These mm -hmm. exceptions cover a lot of contingencies, mm -hmm. and they're very loosely written, mm -hmm. I have to say. Mm -hmm. Is there some way that we can firm that up? Or? We certainly can. I yeah. mean, if, if this, this, ex this would, anybody would be excused for bringing a gun to school under this. So I can tell you, I have, in the seven years that I've been here, presented um, an expulsion case to a board mm -hmm. in which one of these contingencies was truly met. Um, that said, Becky's point is a valid one, and um, if this board would like, we could look at some stronger language um, for, or more clarity for those, certainly given the, the current climate around weapons. I think this just gives the board the latitude to use their judgment if the circumstances are weird. Well, you know, weird is fine, but number, but two, number two and number four are particularly <laughs> troublesome looking at this. Because it requires a subjective opinion, which could be easily fought by the student and by the student's parents, and we would not have anything with which to stand upon to say, we override your opinion. Actually, what so... Um, what I can uh, speak to about that is these have both, the, the times I've had to use these, these are the reasons the administration has brought forward to say, I'll pick on Michelle. Michelle mm -hmm. brought a knife to school. It was discovered. We, as the administration, while we recognize must go through an expulsion hearing with you as the board, would invoke number two 
that she did not intend to use the firearm to threaten or endanger others. It Which can, it right. can, it, and mm -hmm. it can be used by the parents, mm -hmm. but in an expulsion hearing, the administration would be present and would also be able to present evidence. So the board would have to weigh evidence presented by the leadership, the administrator who discovered, as well as the parents. I'm not asking. I totally, I hear you. Well, I, Tita. I, well, I was going to say, I wondered in this policy, this policy does not discuss, and is there another one coming, knives or ammunition. And I, as a principal, have been in a situation in which uh, ammunition was brought to school. And um, the case can be, I was hunting. It was in my backpack. I didn't realize it was there. And I came to school. And part of the discussion at that time was, even if, as far as safety goes, even if the student themselves did not intend to use the weapon or the ammunition, it was now available to anyone else in the room who would use it. Mm -hmm. And that brings out a threat that, that the board would need to think about, I think, at that time. Yeah. So I, I, I guess my um, concern is that the, or the reason I think the exceptions may really matter is that the penalty is so high. I Agreed. mean, so it, the, the penalty expulsion. is expulsion, expulsion for a full this isn't an expulsion. year. Right. Um, so having some room to not apply that penalty does seem important. Um, but doesn't uh, at the time the board get the right to decide whether it's a full penalty or a partial penalty? Not the way it doesn't written. say. No. Okay, so maybe yeah. that's mm -hmm. the problem. So, so, so I think it's important that, that we realize, I mean, I think it's important too, but I also think you know, these are not exceptions to the rule. These yeah. are modifying factors, them. modifying factors in an expulsion mm -hmm. hearing, which mm -hmm. I think is different. So we're not, mm -hmm. you know, no one is saying you can bring a gun to school if you don't intend to threaten or harm anyone with it. But if a gun is brought to school and we're deciding whether we're going to expel someone for a full year, we can, <clears throat> we can look to these factors in mm -hmm. deciding whether that expulsion is fair or should be modified in some way. I also have a follow-up question. Do we have something similar in hand addressing other weapons, knives, crossbows? I just started like to that. look for that in our. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. Knives or ammunition? Mm -hmm. Student behavior. There's Student a lot behavior. Mm -hmm. I'm looking right now. It looks like it does allow for during the expul expulsion hearing to for the board to modify the expulsion. That's the second sentence. Where are we? Um, under sanctions. Under sanctions. Yeah. Paragraph yeah. two. Well, you know, the student may not have intended to harm anybody, but he intended to bring it to somebody else who will harm somebody. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way that it's written, it's written with an awful lot of wiggle room in it. It does say, however, the school board may modify the expulsion on a case by case basis when it finds circumstances such as. I well, mean, mm -hmm. right. <coughs> so, so in that place, you can say you're suspended for a quarter or expelled for a quarter and not yeah. for the whole year. Or right. right. Or, yeah. Yeah, or not expelled, but something else happens. Yeah. I don't well, know. This is affect the rifle in the rack and the in the pickup. Yeah. Same on school property. I'll tell you. So I, well, I almost had to call school um, two days ago because I got groceries on Monday, but I was too tired to unload the whole car. So there was a twelve pack of beer in the trunk of the car, and the next morning my daughter drove that car to the school. And at some point in the day, I realized <laughs> that my daughter's car had a 12-pack of beer in the trunk. These things happen. And mm. uh, I'm not willing to go there. It's so rich about Because you're not going to leave your gun in your car like that. It yeah. shouldn't be anyway. It needs to with your children around. It should be in a safe. And you shouldn't. Don't I guess my same theory is about a backpack. You could leave yeah. a gun in a you backpack a that you have been carrying. using for a family. It could be legal, but it doesn't I, mean it's one. Right. But yeah. I would you say that there has to be? Yeah, I mean, that's, no, that's, I mean, that's, 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 that's yeah. 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 Yeah, I wouldn't say yeah, it's okay it's for you. Okay. Like, it's, it's just, just it's so it is. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're having a cacophony going on. So, um, Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Cacophony. Yes, maybe a question on a different Sorry. theme. The reporting to DCF, Brian, mm -hmm. it says superintendent may report incidents. Would this normally be reported? It seems like it should be. I'm trying to think of. I'm Isn't trying that, to think don't of you have to legally report? I recently had a high school student who was out deer hunting in the fall, 
and you forgot it was under a bunch of coats or whatever in the back seat, but enough was exposed that someone saw it through the window. And so, um, did we call DCF? I would think no. Yeah, I don't think we I'm, I'm, didn't, and he didn't right. intend to bring it. But right. you know, the sanctions are any student who brings the firearm to school. Um, or who possesses a firearm at school shall be brought by the superintendent right. to the school board for the expulsion hearing. So regardless right. of the reasons they bring it or right. it's been found on school property, they have to come for a hearing. Right. And then you have those options to modify the consequence for having done so. And that's what those exceptions are. It doesn't give permission for you to bring it. It's okay. We still have to go through the process. I'm fairly certain that for the expulsion hearing I was referring to, we did not make a report to DCF because it was in the same vein as Lori's situation. Um, when, when a young child at the elementary level right. should have something, right. that's a call for DCF. Absolutely. They have access to something that they could find themselves or other kids very easily and accidentally um, and shouldn't have access to. Okay. So there's I'm not sure what the State Department does with it, but every year they ask you how many guns in school and how many this and how many yes. this. Yeah. Yeah. I think that could be from the guns. No, and that's, that's a fair. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, to collect it. It, it really is to the intent. Okay. You know, if a student brought a weapon to school with, we, and we discovered it and there was intent to harm, that's absolutely going to be a call. Are there specific, I'll sort of try to circle around with you, are there specific questions that folks would like um, Brian and Lori to come back with? information on this policy next time? I mean, is that, would that be a helpful yeah. way to Absolutely. channel? Because we're, sure. we're not acting on this no, policy no. tonight. No. I would ask what, where is uh, other weapons or where are other weapons and ammunition? Where does that fall in the policy realm? Maybe it's not here, but where is it? Because I'd be concerned about it. Okay. And I... Firearms have a specific definition. Right. What is a firearm versus... What you're right. talking and about is like, in the and sometimes it's right. in another something. So I want to, my question is where is it? It doesn't have to be in student behavior. Student behavior, right. Because the only one listed, this is the only one listed for students, is specifically firearms. Weapons are covered in student handbooks. It, it seems to me number two has no point in being in there at all. Number number one covers it, which is, 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 is knowledge. Honestly. Yeah. That's it. If you didn't know you had it, well, then yeah, we're going to understand that. That's Anything else that should be locked up, I don't care the circumstances, I don't care. Well, you know, if we have a rule and we're yeah. serious about it. We reverse, you know, the, the gun that's, the, the hunting gun that's under the coats, which shouldn't be there at that point. Right. But if it is, didn't know, he didn't think he was bringing it to school, he didn't know. It wasn't like he left it in there on purpose and he wasn't going to hurt anybody. It was because he didn't remember, he forgot, he didn't exactly. forgot it was there, right, versus... So what about this, I'll just play devil's yeah. advocate. What about Lori's student who says, yep, I knew it was there, but I didn't intend to bring it into the building. Right, that's against the rules. That right. is against uh, the rules. That, and no one's questioning whether it's against the rules. Right. The, the I, issue right. is whether the, the one-year the one year expulsion can be right. modified. It says you can well, modify. It, but also well, that it's not limited to these items. Right. right. So whatever we put in there it doesn't mean that's the only thing we can But why are we consider? creating that obvious loophole of, yeah. I wasn't going to hurt anybody. Well, it's not a thing to say. It's, yeah. it's a it's a it's a sentencing factor. It's a yeah. sentencing factor, basically, to use a well, and, analogy. Yeah, look at Michelle's example. If if you know her daughter could say, "I didn't know it was there," it was very different from "I knew it was there, but I was going to drink it later." Right. <laughs> <Yeah. Exactly. laughs> That's number one's covers for daughter. Yeah. And I think what Lori had said about bringing it to the board. I think it's important which is in here. I think it's important that even if it was accidental, that you understand how important it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Absolutely. that you don't, it, it's not something acceptable. Well, and nobody takes an expulsion hearing lightly. That is serious business. Mm. No, You're right. 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 Yeah. But that's so what I'm saying. Right. It needs to proceed even if you didn't mean to do it. Right. Well, I mean, you know, none of these are mandatory, but obviously if the language is in there, students are going to latch onto it. That's hearing. right. Yeah. As will their parents, and they will use it to appeal. Yeah. Well, what happens if we just eliminated number two? And number four. I, I would be. Feel about that. Do you want to make a motion to, to do that? I'm asking how everyone feels. Mm -hmm. I move two we eliminate four. number two. And I'm going to leave that as a single. You can do four later if you want. Okay. Let's eliminate number, I want to eliminate number two. Second. 
I have a question of when number three would actually come Yeah, why play. would you need a gun if you're disabled? Well, maybe a disability. The misconduct is related to the disability. The fact that they brought it could be related to their disability. Doesn't the I IEP would, I would not. Lock it up. Doesn't the IEP procedure say that? That um, anything in a disciplinary issue, if you are on an IEP and it's related to your disability, any disciplinary measure may not apply. Is that not true? This is an, this is an automatic. If, even if a child who has a disability brings a firearm, that child needs to come for an expulsion hearing. So I would be very reluctant to do anything with number three. Yeah, I don't think it's a problem. Oh, I don't, I don't think, yeah, think you should eliminate it. I don't think it's a problem. Oh, okay. Right, okay. Yeah. All right. right exactly. Yes. That, that yeah, would be, proposed. but it would still, yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, do we have action to, to do that? So I've heard the question are oh, just is, number two right now. So I've heard the question so far is what about other weapons? Any other questions to bring back for further conversation? Are we no, wait, we've got vote a motion. On that motion? We got a motion. I apologize. Yeah. Then we'll get I, back I don't back. think we're it's it's not born for action tonight. Oh right. So, so it's just advice. We're just, just having a we're just suggesting okay. to the committee Fine. to say take just out number two. First first just discussion. You're right. You're right. You first can first certainly reading. do a straw poll if you wanted to come out with different. No, you're right. It's not what we think clear. Thank you. This is all first reading. It's all first reading. Got it. Um I would like to know I mean um you know if this policy is, um, if any part of this list around the, the sanction is required actually by state law, I and mean, I don't, this is a mandatory VSBA policy, I don't know how much of the policy itself is. And mandatory. I can see the legislature want to really control that. Um, <laughs> I mean, VSBA yeah. is recommendation. Because they've got so much time now. So it's specific to those four recommendations? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. I remember being in the legislature during the the shotgun in the rack in the pickup conversations and it was it's hotly debated each of these little exceptions and conditions and possibilities when it comes to guns so it's That's possible right. to, like Bridget saying that somebody actually has already told us what to do mm -hmm. yeah. people in orange vests were there recently yes they are okay. so do we need to take is that nope. do we have further no, discussion on no. any of the first meetings first okay <laughs> thank you uh, good so we Moving on to agenda six, we have a third reading on the in-district elementary school transfer <laughs> policy. I have copies of this. Which we do have two. Uh, different from you, oh, what, was the, what was in the original agenda? Right. Is that right, there was a, well, we, I have two copies. Two there was the one that was emailed with the original gen agenda <laughs> is the same thing that you've seen before, and it oh. is what was the it? one that Lisa just gave us is the really is the, good one that was in our email. This just came last. This is the I was very pleased. You can, that's all right. Yep, I know which one that is. I was like, wow, we wouldn't have had to talk about this three times if that was how it started out. <laughs> Brian, before we jump all the way away from the mandatory policies, yeah. can I ask the tobacco policy? Yeah. Clothing that has advertisements on it? Yes. Is that is that something that's in the handbook? So if I came to school with a shirt that said So that would be student self expression. So that's a different kettle of fish altogether. So when you're talking about student self expression, please help me when I go off the rails here. Um, the um, the law is based on a Supreme Court ruling called Tinker. And you have to be able to say as an administrator that the expression will cause substantial interference to other students' access to their free and appropriate public education. And so for example, I'll give you the- Or a disruption. A or substantial disruption, disruption, right, to the school day. Um, the courts have ruled that a Confederate flag fits that description. And so a school leader is perfectly reasonable to say, sorry, Ryan, you need to take that off. Um, or turn it inside that, Or turn it, we can't see it. Yeah. That would be very tricky, I would say, if we were gonna go after something on someone's shirt. I don't know that I could say with a straight face that that would be a substantial disruption and or preventing someone else's access to their public education. It was just kind of a curiosity. It wasn't a that's fair. huge point. No, no, no. That's, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know, the presence of tobacco yeah. products mm -hmm. and people coming to school with you know, cigarette mm -hmm. shirts on or whatever, whether or not that would make. Where I think I would 
wonder about it is for someone who's a fan of um, race car driving, and if they wore a shirt the that the sponsor included something like that. And I don't know that I would feel comfortable saying that that would fit the bill. I kind of expected it was in a it's, handbook. It's a tricky, it's a very, it's very tricky, tricky area. There, there was this U.S. Supreme Court decision of where the high school students unfold, unfurled a banner that said, Bong Hits for Jesus. And they were yeah. and they were disciplined for that, and the U.S. Supreme Court said that that was okay, and actually, you know, said that that Tinker standard was maybe not the only standard that could apply, and in that opinion, talks quite a bit, however, about the public health interest for students and and illegal drug use, and you know that that is another substantial interest that the school district has, and allowed that, but you know that wasn't what someone was wearing, Valid. and it wasn't tobacco. I, it's it's a very tricky. Mm -hmm. Does tobacco substitutes cover vaping? I hope so. Mm -hmm. That's what I read it as. Mm -hmm. Does it? I think we would have that, that's how exactly I would have brought, that's how I would go after it. So it's importing those state law definitions. Okay. That we could look at those. I, I would be surprised if those don't include vaping at this point. Okay. One way or the other, we should include vaping. Definitely. Yeah, that's an all right. I, vaping and I mean, I, I'm looking I would actually. Yeah. Jewels. Yeah. I've got yeah. it. Tobacco substitute means products, including electronic cigarettes or other electronic or battery powered okay. devices that contain and are designed to deliver nicotine or other substances into the body through inhaling vapor and that have not been approved by the US FDA for tobacco right. cessation or other medical purposes. That does okay. cover it. Yeah. Thank you. Of course, bro. Thank you. So, um, moving on to third reading in district elementary school transfer policy. Um, thank you. Lisa, for your own new copy. Um, any discussion on this? Discussed it a lot already. It looks good. Any discussion, or can we skip on to item seven? So if there's just just so we're moving along, if there's no discussion on this, then I think it we will can, this, these changes will be accepted and it'll be warned for adoption in this form yeah. at the yes. next. Yeah. 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 It says the only way to approve a transfer is through extraordinary circumstances between Roxbury Elementary and Union. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that everyone doesn't leave Roxbury? Is that yeah. 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 Or Montpelier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For stability. I think one of the things is we're, we, we, this is all kind of referencing back to the um, agreement that both towns approved in the sense that there was sort of, there was, this was sort of, um, this was a long discussion at that level before the towns agreed to come together and the value of maintaining the elementary here and it, kind of the conditions of that but that it, everybody knows it won't it, that um, the decision that happened this year doesn't necessarily apply five years from now so it's kind of a we're going to start this way well, what happens if there are Montpelier kids that would strengthen the Roxbury school how do you how do you that say want to be part of our farm to table program or this we have a farm that's very tied up into the school and an influx of even if it was three kids would make a big difference I think so would you need to define an extraordinary circumstance to strengthen the Roxbury school by bringing in more kids it's an excellent question yeah mm -hmm. I think at this point, yes, under this policy. We were trying to keep it balanced between right. the two. But I mean, I understand the yeah, impulse yeah. to keep this school as strong as possible, but I wouldn't want to weaken your uh, opportunity to strengthen it further. Okay. Yeah, so the anticipation okay. is we. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. 
students are going to see. You know, we've had parents from the Roxbury, or students right now, asking questions about, you know, I work in downtown Montpelier, I like to take my kids to Union Elementary. Um, if in the future the board administration is hearing there's a more reciprocal relationship between both UES and RVS, then the board would likely revisit and consider making changes. But at this point in time, we really don't anticipate a reciprocal relationship between exchanges. Right. Maybe Roxbury gets a stronger place because they're a cheaper property and you have access to Montpelier School District. Right. You know, in five years, it could be a different place. Yeah, mm -hmm. also. In 10 years. We, ac we actually had that discussion in the merger meeting to say, suppose I said, I think my child would do better in a small school. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. change the policy in two years or three years. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I think one of the goals behind this policy and behind kind of the way we're dealing with the merger is to go with, with the, the merger agreement and kind of enforce stability and, and get a structure in place. And then, you know, as it evolves, if we start to see opportunities for change that kind of, you know, preserves that stability and preserves this. to say no now. Yeah. You're going to have a real big problem. Yeah. Yep. We may, for instance, we may see individual families moving from one of our towns to another of our towns in the middle of the elementary period. Mm -hmm. I don't think we necessarily considered that other than that there, that might be an extraordinary. That might that be an extraordinary. Yes. Well, that, but we have a consistent policy of kind of letting people mm -hmm. finish out, too. Mm -hmm. Finish out the year, not the Finish day. out the year. Right. It, I mean, you know, I think there are, that could be considered extraordinary. They've already been going there for three years. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Can I point something out? Thanks yeah. to my colleague, Lori Gossens. The statutory sanctions um, are in 16 BSA 1166, and they are listed as such. So there's statutory requirement for that. Um, for, for, wait, um, for those four. One, two, three. So for the, the yeah. question was, are, are those, those sanctions required by law? They are, and it's in 16 BSA 1166. me in either the fact they exist or how they're written. Yeah. Per, your, uh, per your conversation. <laughs> might have been a committee I was on. <laughs> that sounded really familiar. Let's take note of that. Uh, <laughs> any other committee you were part of? <laughs> like, what other exceptions Thanks. can we come up with? Okay, well, that answers that debate. Um, uh, all right, so just so we're clear, we are good with the industry policy. Yay. That is going to be. Thank you, Ryan. Yes. That is going to be. Thank you. For adoption. For adoption. For adoption. For adoption. At 516. And now, okay. even more fun. So, uh, on to item seven. Uh, fourth reading class size. We adopt a policy on class size. Second. You don't even. Uh, at, we, this, at this point, at point so we're, we're done. Reading. Right. At this point, if people are same with the. There's introduction. one. So, so it looks like on the version I have, it looks like you changed the shell back to must. Am I looking at the right one? What do I do? <laughs> All the shells was the will. Right. No. There was, what, oh, okay, there was a version that was one that had a. Um, yeah. It actually had a strike letter, letter yeah. for it, which did not come out here. So that's okay. It's it's it's, it's correct. It is on that. Um, but there were two. So there were. So that's not an issue anymore. There's two small things, as I yep. said. Remember, I the email. They should both say guidelines. K eight. Because K-8 says guidelines, mm -hmm. line 12 says parameters. Last mm -hmm. time the board said they wanted both to be guidelines. Got okay. it. Got it. Um, and uh, there's one change that we want to put on the table that Tina and I have discussed, but um, I think this requires discussion, which is the change that Tina suggested the last time we talked about this. So this is on page two under the uh, chart. One, two, three. Paragraphs down, the last sentence says, the principal has discretion to approve these course offerings, even if doing so brings the minimum average for the content area below the guideline. The last time we talked about the policy, Tina asked about adding, after considering other alternatives, 
the principal has discretion. Um, I said I, I wanted to talk to the high school principal, which I did, who does not have any concerns with that. So I think that changes on the table, but it has not been considered by the board. So throwing it out there for discussion. I don't know that it changes the outcome. Yeah. Can you read the letter um, again, please, Bridget? It would say that the sentence, after considering other alternatives, comma, the principal has discretion to approve these course offerings, even if doing so brings the minimum average for the content area below the guideline. And what I had said in the last discussion is Mike is very good at this. He does this very well. I just wanted it in policy in case it wasn't there. <laughs> So are we approving the fourth reading or are we doing another meeting to do that? Can we say we approve it with the addition? I think we can say we approve it with the addition. Yeah. 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 So the motion, I uh, see that I move that we approve the class size policy with the following changes. Nine to 12 class size parameters changed to guidelines. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, the language inserted in the last sentence mm -hmm. of the third paragraph after the high school chart, after considering other alternatives, mm -hmm. comma, the principal has discretion. All second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we have a class size policy. Congratulations. Okay, um, time check. Uh, I suggest that we table number nine, I know we've done this before, until May 16th. Um, let's definitely do it on May 16th. But I feel it's, it's almost quarter to nine, and we're gonna lose Michelle. Uh, we're probably losing some brain power as well. I'm like a 4.15 flight tomorrow, I gotta to get to the airport at 4.15, so I have this much patience. Okay. Um, okay. Which leaves us with the update on the search process and appointment for the screening committee. Uh, I think one item we do under the superintendent search process, uh, I think we should just ratify the change on the Mondays. It's done starting at 4 o'clock to start at 4.30. Uh, teachers have a mandatory meeting until 4.15 those days. Um, and we want, obviously want uh, teacher and staff participation. So. Um, probably makes it easier for everyone. Yeah, probably makes it easier for everyone. So just push everything back a half hour. Jim, what is the meeting schedule? Have it? Uh, no. I have it somewhere. Well, don't worry about it. Um, um, it's the 7th, 14th, and 21st. The 7th would be, it was originally from 4 to 5.30. It'll move back from 4.30 to 6.00. The 14th and 21st would be pushed back from 4 to 7 under the change from 4.30 to 7.30, uh, and then all day on the 29th, I It believe. was changed from the 21st to the 22nd. Okay. So the 22nd, so the 7th, 14th, 22nd. And 29th. And 29th. And the 29th. 29th being, could be. Uh, all day. All, all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the that's when we walk folks around. Twenty ninth is the is the all day. Well, it could be. It depends could on be. how many people. So I'm willing to hear how how you're picking your committee and how many people will be in it. Do you have too many people? Or and that's what we, we have a lot of people. <laughs> I. Um, <laughs> You are in a favorable position. Uh, As the only Roxbury volunteer. Yes. <laughs> Which we appreciate very much. Which we appreciate very much. Yes. Uh, does that schedule change create problems for no, you? No, I'll find a way. Okay. I, I think it is the 22nd that would be the full day because that's the interviewing of camp semifinalists. Well, and I'm wondering if it's not both of those days. I think, the 29th I think is. I think there's two interview days, and then I think the 29th is when the we call back the final. Yeah, we call back the final and do the walk around and have the meet up. That's the 4th of June. Oh, okay. Oh, that's the 4th of June? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Well then. <laughs> yes, and there are applicants. I thought the fourth of June was the board. It's oh, both. It's that's both. not okay. a board meeting. That you know of? Well, uh, it will be. No, it was an additional adding on of that. Yeah. Is, is that going to be an added on board meeting? I think by the fourth, the steering that would be committee nice for board more is to know. Right. Yeah. I, I so on the so the twenty ninth is basically when the steering committee screening committee to, reviews reference checks and then identifies the three candidates to recommend to the board. And can you remember why it would come to the board on the fourth instead of the sixth when we have a regular scheduled meeting? Yes, yes because we have a full like it's going to be a big day for the candidates there and. And then we have our regular schedule on the 6th of yeah. board agenda, policy, et cetera. I mean, I, so I see that we're not going to have meeting. time that makes sense. Yeah. So to fit it all in. I'm asking yeah. that because we were just discussing, so it's clear to the whole board that oh. will be another board meeting on the 4th. Yes. Interviewing the finalists and then choosing. I did not have that on my calendar. Hearing it for the first time. Was that it not was, on it the, was discussed it, at the? It was discussed when we met with Mike the first time. Yeah. But maybe it didn't get on the. And I hopefully don't have. Well, and that was the meeting in which there were a lot of board members not there. Because mm -hmm. it was great. Right. Okay. All right, so, so are we selecting the member? The we are selecting members? the screening yeah. committee right because they're meeting on Monday. Okay. okay. Uh, so, so um, can we go to the easy ones first? My, my suggestion is to go to the easy ones first, and then what I was thinking is to have uh, folks just circle their top three, and we'll see where the matches are, and mm -hmm. that'll decide it for us, and where there's not agreement, we can debate those. Um, let's start with the teachers. Well, first of all, let's... Let's start with the board and the leadership team and kind of see how many numbers we want. We have 12 total. Mm -hmm. My suggestion is two leadership team, two board, four teachers, four community members that give those 12. No students? Oh, one, one, we should have one, so one student. So, so that say is, so it we again. need to knock two someone board. off of either the teachers or the when you say teachers, were you members. including all faculty and staff, or just teachers? Yeah, you I'm must be including I'm included. all fa faculty okay. and staff. Can you give me those that number proposal again? Two leadership team, two board. Uh, one student. One student, so we're at five. Yep. Either four or three community members, parents, and either four or three teachers, other staff. Do we have a maximum number? 12. 12. So, cool. not a maximum number? Mm. Well, once we agreed on this at the meeting on the night. Right. Yeah, we, Mike wanted us to have a maximum number of 10, and we told him 10 would be hard, so we got a maximum number of 12. So, yes, that's so the maximum number. So, we're, we're resolved on 12 now. We're resolved. So, after the, excluding the um, staff, teachers, and um, what was the last one that the you one said? Student? Student? No. No. I'm, never mind. I'm okay. And we do have two leadership team members here. I don't know if you guys want to weigh in and put on that. Us, <laughs> us weigh in? Yeah. <laughs> we three like leadership team members. Huh? Uh, we, do, we would like to, if that's okay. Yes. Yeah. We, we had a pretty lengthy discussion on the leadership team, and I think I articulated this to, to you, Jim, in, in my email with that information that we would, we are strongly advocating for three members, and those members all represent diverse yep. parts of the leadership level. One is um, Mary Lundine, who comes with a variety of levels of experience. Um, I, I was listed number two as the building principal rep, and then we felt strongly that Grant should be there from the business. So we, just listening to the numbers, I respect totally. Yes. Trying to, to have, running a committee myself, trying to limit the numbers. But for a district of, of a thousand plus students and the superintendent being our direct supervisor, 
I'm advocating for the leadership team that we have at least three members. <clears throat> Makes it easier to choose between picking off a community member and a teacher. You mean Just send both of, of them to three and yeah. three from each of the... I mean... I'm, yeah. What is... What does yeah. have a teacher from our building think about that? Because we have two community, two Vermont Montpelier members, and then one Roxbury. I, I think we should have four community members. I think that ultimately they're the owners of this district, and this is an opportunity for um, building some faith, I think, in the community around around what we're doing next. I might be overstating it, right? It's just a committee. It's a it's a it's a committee that recommends to the board, but it, there, the more community members we involve in this process, at some point, the stronger this is going to feel going coming through our decision. So that's all I would say. I'm, I'm not opposed to having three leadership team members by any means, but I think that you know if we look at who who, who are we hiring this person for, you know, typically. We're hiring this person to lead the district for the owners of the district. That's it. And the rest of us are all just trying to make it right for the owners. Not for our bosses, not for the person we super, not because we supervise them, not for any other reason. So um, we just have to be very sensitive to the engagement of the community during the process of superintendent hiring. And it could be engaged in some other way, but I think we need to have an engagement. So could we have 13 people on the committee? I, I don't think Mike will quit if we do. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay, no, so that solves that problem. <laughs> uh, Michelle. So both of these students, I know them, and they're both very small. They could fit on one seat. <laughs> <laughs> they are. It's true. What does that mean? I can't catch up. Keep going, keep going, right? I, 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 not to choose between them. And, no, they're very good. Yeah. There's probably there's some small community small. members, yes. too. <laughs> they wouldn't take up a lot of oh, I see. They, wouldn't, I, they wouldn't okay, demand a those, lot of resources. I need you to explain the joke to me. Yeah, I, I know one of them. and um, She's your next door neighbor, right? I think you have to. Yes. <laughs> Right. Oh. He's going to well, recuse himself you, from this discussion. <laughs> if that was the standard, I'd be recused. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. we'd yeah. all be recused from yeah. uh, can, um, well, Is there anyway. another opportunity to engage community members that I'm just glossing right well, over? You know, well, in, the, yeah. in the process of one of those days that we can't decide what it is, the 22nd or the 29th, there should be an opportunity for what I would call a community forum so that people could come in and ask the candidates questions and Except so that, that will happen on the process is confidential so that will happen on June 4th when the three happen. candidates it's only the final the tour yeah. the schools, okay. and um, there would be opportunities then for the community to be involved okay. um, so this is different from the other administrative hiring processes we have three candidates rather than one Yes. Okay. yes. And, and I had checked on that. Yeah, because we, Apparently so the other ones, we basically approved the superintendent's decision here. We're making the hiring. Gotcha. So right. if that's a robust yeah, that's a step. step. That's if we actually right. really emphasize that step, get the word out, get people to oh, be aware that they have an opportunity, the rest, the, the committee structure has less meaning to me in that sense. I mean, I do still like the idea of having a ton of community members on the committee, but at some point we need to get people to say, I met them. I'm glad they chose that person, or boy, that was a big mistake. But you know, so if we can commit to kind of having a good, solid forum there, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think that solves a lot of problems. It's a, it's that also was. an interesting thing to watch your candidates yeah. deal with a large. I mean, I know superintendents that have been hired in 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 bigger towns and cities, in which one of the process was to be in a room with 300 people asking you questions. Yeah. So I mean, I also want to say the, you know, the teachers feel similar to the leadership team that the superintendent is a hire that very directly affects their lives and they want, you know. The other uh, aspect of that is that the knowledge of 
the details that the leadership team has is extremely valuable to sussing out who's the best candidate. Yes. And not everyone, no one has knowledge of as many details. And I mean, I know I'm trying to represent Roxbury, but I'm doing it because I don't think anyone else is. Lisa represents Rock Roxbury in this yeah. committee, so. I, I think uh, that's, that's more important, honestly, than because they approve of their supervisor, right? That, that piece is what matters, and I don't really care whether they approve of their supervisor otherwise. Um, oh, can, I, can I just comment to that? Because yes. yeah. there's a lot that goes into that role of supervisor, right. and a lot of what he's just speaking to is part of that. But when you're looking at the <coughs> system systematically, we're not, when I say that, I'm not just saying, you know, this is important to us because it's our supervisor, but that supervisor does dictate the vision, the direction, the mm -hmm. movement of the district, and we are really a very critical piece of that. And so that position is why it's so critical for us in terms of a supervisor role. We all have to be working together. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, I, just, I, I think what I want to be careful of, though, in that is that, that the vision that exists internally, while that should be informing the vision to come, it can't control the vision to come, right? So it, obviously we don't want disruption for no reason, but we have to be cautious about the balance between all of these things. And uh, you know, ultimately the board has the say, right? So I'm not, I don't feel concerned about it and without, but I, I really think, and, and I think honestly they overlap so much that we're not even arguing, but you know, the idea that you know what it takes to get these, to what needs, what a supervisor, or what a superintendent needs to do and how they need to do it in order to be effective. And I think those things all go together. So. So are we at three community members, three teachers, three administrators, one student, and two school board members? I want to <laughs> inject something else in the mix. We can double count. We have people who are teachers, community members, and parents oh, okay. all at the same time. That's very tricky. It's tricky, but or yeah. the, the, <laughs> the perspective. But I I, I I don't love it either, but I think we can I think we can say that, that we have people who bring more than one perspective. I don't I think, think we I think the community I don't think we feel not really put, shortchanged by that. I think they but I think we can go to three community members if we have two of the teachers who are also community members. I see. So we have three community members plus two teachers who are in the community. Our community member group and the parent group. Well, the only one on the teachers list who doesn't live in Montpelier is Laura. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. But wow. I was going to propose for the teachers, maybe other people have opinions. I don't have a strong opinion about this, and I feel like we could put their six names in a hat and draw three of them. Unless... Yeah, I think I think they're all fantastic too, but I I think it might be valuable to prioritize a few of those, especially if you're only going to have three community members because they, they they are community members, they are parents, they have that perspective, they've had that experience with the schools um, as well as their teacher experience, which they'll bring to the table. I don't think we should see them as community ambassadors, but I think we can honestly say that these people have seen the district from multiple perspectives. So you're going to make the decision of which teacher doesn't come? Uh, we, can't give, we can't give all the teachers there. No, oh, there. Well, absolutely. Right. But, I mean, six. you have to eliminate one. And you have to eliminate three. No, yeah. right. Oh, that's right. Oh, right. Right, right, right. So, you know, Jim, I, I like the theme you're going with, and I appreciate it. And I'm not totally jumping on board with Steve of having more community members there. But I'll admit, I was surprised when I was going through the list of the Montpelier folks, how many names I already knew, not as personal acquaintances, but already like through board action, mm -hmm. how many have served on committees before, et cetera. And I was a little bit surprised by that. Um, granted, we know the same people do all the same things over and over. It's true everywhere. But, right, but I thought a little bit like we should get some new folks in there potentially as well. Um, so the yeah. idea of having a teacher serve as a parent and a community member kind of defeats that ability to get some more fresh perspective or some new people involved in the process. Yeah. I'm not really saying no bad idea, but I was, again, not knowing as many Montpelier residents as you guys do, I was surprised. Hey, those are old board members. I've worked with them, or I did this, and... Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, if, if we want to bring 
if we don't want to balloon it out to 14 or 15, and we want to break it down and say, you know, maybe what we can do is we can go with, with teachers who wear multiple hats and bring well, multiple perspectives, I which I, I think. I don't think we need to. If we have two board members plus three leadership team, that's five. Um, a student is six, and three staff and three community members makes 12. That's right. And by default, we're going to have two out of the three teachers also as community members. Right. At least, if not three out of the three. Right. Well, it sounded like I don't Steve wanted to go more like I'm four. I'm not people. sure about Russell. I'm not sure right. where he does. Oh, I guess it just he said going community on. It says member. community member okay. there. But. Oh. Um, yeah, it does. You're right. So there you have it. Okay. It's only Laura who's not. Um, do it, since teachers seem hard, should we do the community members? So let's just get the five slotted down. So we're going to go do three leadership teams. Do we agree to that? Two board. We seem to be heading in that direction. Pam makes a good I case. Think, yes. Uh, yep. I say yes. Team. No okay. objections. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so we have five. Just so we're clear, the leadership team members are Pam Arnold, Mary Dean, and Grant Gessler. Okay. And the um, board members are, I didn't make the list, um, Tina Munsey and Lisa Frost. Uh, Peter has taken his hat out of the ring. I think Teachers. perhaps we could put the two students in a hat and draw them out, because I don't know how I do that. Yeah. I don't see why they can't both do it. Just go from 12 to 13. Yeah, yeah, let's put both students on. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I think that's fair. I think that's good. And I I can't imagine they'll cause my lots of trouble. Okay. And they yeah, they may commit to those times, but it may turn out that they can't both make them all. Their lives are very busy. Yeah. All right. Okay. On the other hand, I'd have to say, well, you've asked everybody else to commit, so yeah. they should commit, they should commit too. too. Yeah, we, we want them there the whole time. Well, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So should we tackle t teachers first or community members first? How did you propose doing community? I was going to have people, well, I think we can all agree on Rhett as a Roxbury mm -hmm. member. Yes, thank you, Rhett. Well, for something happens to Lisa that she lets me know, maybe I can go in her seat. Is that ever a thing? No. <laughs> no. no. Yeah, There's like more than one <laughs> Roxbury <laughs> member on for one. Uh, yeah. Secondly, you impress me. You seem like you'll be good. You've got great experience. Um, and you showed up and survived this whole meeting. Yeah, you showed up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So he's on. So yes. he's on. Move on. Moving right along. Yes. Uh, so are we going to pick two more from the Roxbury members? Uh, from the community members? Yeah. The community members. I'm just going to go around the table and ask people who their two choices are. How about that? Would okay. I keep going around and ask? I got mine. No, okay. Okay, why don't, why don't you take five seconds and circle them so that way you don't... <laughs> you're not influenced by other people's choices. And no scratching it. <laughs> <laughs> Jim's going to be checking. <laughs> okay, how many minutes? Five minutes? Five seconds. Five, Five seconds? seconds. <laughs> I have to reread two of them. Yeah. You just know everyone, so it's easy for yeah. you. I have to go by what they wrote. Okay. Well, I did two, but now I don't remember one from another. Good for you.
need more time. I'm good at it. You're good? So they, do you still have more time for it or you? No, I'm okay. All right. Uh, Tina. Uh, um, Stacy and Ken. Bridget. Denise Bailey and Sarika Tandon. Denise and Sirica. Do I get to vote or? You yeah. have to wait. Sure. Oh, you wait. Wait. Oh, wait. wait. Yeah. Stacy Sheehan and Sirica Tandon. Rebecca right. Copens and Stacy Sheehan. Stacy and Sirica. Steve. Uh, Nathan and Sirica. For Stacy, six for Sarika, and the Dave Denise is third can, with three. So can I ask? We're choosing two, right? Yeah. Can I ask two. that we we've selected Sarika and that we go back and choose the second, kind of a rank order preference voting type of thing, rather than just have it be plurality? Sure. Now that, so everybody choose <laughs> one now. Run off. One out of like the last the three. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. One out of whoever's. I guess there's two people Stacey really that are. Denise. It's Stacy okay. and Denise. Really, are the two. Yeah. Well, let's see. Four people got votes. Um, yeah, but there's two that are way ahead. They're like the seconds are both close. Very good. It's 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 Stacy and Denise. Stacy and Denise. If you just want to say Ryan, who would you choose between Stacy and Denise? Yeah, I did that for Stacy the first time. Oh. Okay. So Tina, Stacy, right. Stace, Stace or Denise? Well, I did the same thing. I voted for Stacy the first time. Right. And I so. voted for Denise. You need to find them. We'll we go around. We need to find Denise. the people who mm -hmm. didn't who vote, didn't for, vote for, for either of them. Well, it's you, there's, Steve, because you... And there's three of us who didn't. I voted yeah. for Stacy. Yeah, we all I, voted for Stacey Oh, maybe it's... Denise. Maybe they oh. didn't vote. Maybe the people didn't vote for any of So, yeah, I, I would go Stacy. Okay, there we go. So, our three community members are... Uh, Stacey Sheehan, Sarika Tandon, and Rhett Williams. It's really crazy how that. Okay. The, level, that is the level of agreement there is crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they're all fed. Especially for us. Yeah. I was That was extremely surprising. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, <laughs> thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thanks, yeah, thanks, Rhett. Thank, Thank you very much. No yeah. teachers, right? Oh, yeah. I'll be around. We're a fantastic yeah. group, too. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, this is Okay. Uh, oh, teachers. No. Three teachers. Three, three teachers slash educators. I suggest we do two, two teachers and one non-teacher. Um, okay. That would be Morgan and Laura and one other person. Yes. Why? Um, I thought there were four teachers. teachers. What about Julie and Laura? There's four They're teachers. teachers. They're special teachers. They're teachers. They're teachers. They're categorized as teachers. Sylvia yeah. and Julie. Well, they're teachers. They're, they're teachers. teachers. Okay. They're not classroom teachers. Well, that's a different, that's yeah. a different, different category. category. <laughs> they're teachers. <laughs> okay. Well, should we go for one classroom teacher, one non-classroom teacher, and one non-teacher? They're as equal. So How about proportionate that? of everybody. So. Yeah, sure. Okay. So that makes that makes the voting easier. Um, Can we distinguish those quickly? Yeah, so so Morgan Julie, is a classroom teacher, Laura is a classroom okay. teacher. And Sylvia and Julie are non classroom teachers and Peter and Russell are uh, non teachers and staff. staff. Uh, wow. okay. So um, Can you do them all at once? Let's, let's do a category by category. Um, Tina Morgan or Laura for the teacher's floor? I won't choose. <laughs> I'm back to putting it that. You're uh, what? I'd be happy to draw this, but maybe not. Yeah. yeah, I'd be happy to draw them out of a hat. 
Uh, you can it go around. Maybe like everybody else will have a choice, and it'll work. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's Morgan. Okay. Laura. Huh? Laura. Lisa. Um, Laura. Morgan. Morgan. I'm Morgan too. That's a tough one. They're all incredible. <laughs> They're all we have great people. Oh. <laughs> I have great confidence in this community. Yes. All these people. Mm -hmm. uh, Julie, or Julie or Sylvia? Julie. I don't think I can go on. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. I don't know right now. Huh? <laughs> we'll go back to Lisa. Ryan. Julie. Sylvia. Sylvia. And I'm Sylvia too. Nice. Oh, no. Do I? Yeah. Um, I just anymore, huh? I don't have <laughs> I don't have who they are in my memory right now. So, so Julie is a community member who's also a special educator new to the district this year. Uh, Sylvia is an ELL teacher, has okay. had experience at all three buildings, okay, and yep. is also a community member. Well, Julie's new to the district this yep. year in terms of being employed. Sorry, here, but, she's but I did say community in member and kids, in the, kids in the district. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Sylvia. 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 For the final slot, um, Peter Watt or Russell Leet. Peter is an IA, Santana community member. They're both community members, and Russell Leet is uh, tech support specialist. Specialist. Peter. Russell's on the curriculum coordinator. Yeah. 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 Okay. No preference. Okay, so um, for the record, and I think this is a fantastic committee, and I really feel we left some great people off too. Uh, Tina Muncy, Lisa Frost, Pam Arnold, Mary Lundeen. Grant Geisler, Jenna Crusman, Krusman. Krusman. Krusman, sorry, I should know that. Uh, Juna Nagel, um, Stacy Sheehan, Sarika Tandon, Rhett Williams, Morgan Lloyd, Sylvia Finnegan, and Peter Watt. Great. Great. Good hands. Yep. Dude, would you mind one time running through the schedule again for the meetings? Just because there was a date that got added that I don't think I had. It's not on that email. Okay. Do you, I think Lisa has it. So time for the 22nd. Well, I think to be determined to 7 yeah, right. I have to say, after the whole discussion, I'm not very clear on times. Yes. I got the days, but I'm not very clear on times. That can be sent out immediately, right? Afterwards? Yeah. Because you have to notify everybody anyway. Yeah. yeah. And I, I just want to add that if, if there's a board meeting that's being added to the calendar, that we're all very clear as soon as possible that there's a board meeting that's not on the regular calendar. <clears throat> add one thing so that Jim could act on the one thing yes. and that is I propose that there be a committee to uh, with the charge to write a superintendent evaluation document to present to the board for its um, editing and changes isn't that part of the policy committee an evaluation document mm -hmm. as a policy no, I'm not. No. Oh, well, I'm proposing it's not a policy. It's just you usually have a document by which you evaluate your superintendent. 
and we talked about <coughs> getting it done, and it would be really nice if we had it done before we hired. Yeah, no, I think that. And I um, have talked to Nancy Reed, who is on the Montpelier board. She is willing to be on that committee, and um, she's willing to be on that committee if another board member would like to be on that committee. She's willing to have them chair it, or she. What is that committee? Committee would be but to that's write. That's not the work of the Montpelier board. That's the work but of the she Montpelier board. Like she could be like a community, 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 community member volunteering her time. Yeah. But then there would need to be a board, need to be a board, 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 board member from this one to mm -hmm. chair it. Mm -hmm. the to write and an I'm evaluation not, tool? It's very late, so I didn't mean to propose that we solve all these problems right now, but the issue yeah, of the committee that the Jim could work uh, work on and yeah. have a discussion about if the board did not yeah, thought it was a good idea, it was all I'm asking for. Agenda for the 16th, and I know that Nancy, so I'll, I'll reach out to Nancy and tell her that we're going to discuss it on the mm -hmm. 16th. She, yeah, yeah, she yeah, cannot be here on the 16th. Be, yeah, right. I'll, I'll just get her permission for us to... Mm -hmm. Volunteer her name. <laughs> <laughs> Much like Peter. Yeah. Um, Can we adjourn? Can I move? Uh, Can we just yeah. state for the record this will be the last um, Roxbury? This will be the last board meeting of this board in Roxbury um, for this so school year. Okay. Did you just make a motion? I tried to. Well, if you did, you did. Sorry, Michelle. I moved to adjourn. Second. 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 Okay. Thanks, everyone, for coming.